What's up guys? Alexander here. Date Psychology. So, another paper, another day. We're going to talk about this new one up here. Uh, men say I love you first. And what does that mean? I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not telling you this is what real men do or anything like that. This is a paper that looks at who says I love you first in a relationship, right? When they start dating. Uh, so it is not prescriptive advice. It is looking at some sex differences. Let's look at the paper here. It's called Men Say I Love You Before Women Do. Robust across several countries. And this is actually replicating some past results. I put the paper below in that that found the same result in an American population. We're looking at some other populations here. Ackerman was the other one. Going forward, let's look at some methods, some of the variables that we are going to look at, okay? Attachment styles. So what are those? You know, secure attachment, avoidant attachment, anxious attachment. And of course, attachment theory, it's pretty robust. Uh, I think it sounds almost like, I think a lot of people, they see it so much in kind of pop psych, they think it sounds almost kind of like astrology or something, but it's actually pretty robust. We're going to look at attractiveness, okay? And let's see if I remember at the end here. And we're going to look at seven different countries. Four of them are European countries. Three are countries in Latin America. I should say three are European. One is Australia, which is European, more or less. And three in Latin America. Maybe that's also kind of European in a way. What else do we got going on here? In six countries, just getting right into the results. Men said, I love you first. This is called the male confession bias, what Ackerman coined the term as. So this is something that we see, that men tend to be the first one in a relationship to confess love, right? To say, I love you first, okay? This was reported both by men and by women because there could be a bias in remembering who said it first, right? Who said it first? And given different perceptions, there may be some disagreement, but no, we, we have agreement here for both sexes, right? We see that men said that they said it first, and women also said that the man said it first. So, pretty robust results here. In France, there was no sex difference, okay? Maybe because they're very romantic. I don't know. But they didn't find one in France. The Ackerman paper did. The other six countries in this paper did as well. So, we got a pretty robust result here. Let's go on to the next slide. They looked at some other things, like how early in a relationship and also in thinking or the confession of love. When did this take place? When did someone first realize they were in love? And when did someone first think about saying it? And there was no sex difference here. So it's not necessarily the case that men fall in love first. And I think I've seen the Ackerman paper reported in the past as kind of evidence that men fall in love first. And I'm not sure if that's in those results, but in these results, it's not. Uh, men don't seem to actually fall in love first, but men do confess it first. Men do say it first. And we see no sex differences in the happiness of being told. So if the woman says it first, the man is happy. The man says it first, the woman is happy, and they are equally happy, right? Everyone is happy with being told uh, by someone that they're in a relationship with that that person is in love with them, basically. Next slide here, we're going to look at some sex ratios. And what is that? The proportion of men to women in a population, right? Because you could have many more men in some place like Kuwait, for example, uh, Dubai, that sort of a thing, where you have a big, big imbalance. We didn't look at those countries in this paper, but as an example. Sex ratios. In countries with more women here, men actually confessed their love first more frequently. So more women in a country, the more likely the man is to say, I love you first. Let's go on and see the next slide here. As I mentioned, they looked at attachment theories, and you might expect these to have a relationship with confession and also with being happy with being told, right? Because avoidantly attached people, for example, they do not want to uh, get entwined in a relationship as easily, so to speak, do they, right? That's kind of the characteristic of being avoidant, that they're avoiding closeness and connection with someone else. And anxious individuals, kind of the opposite. They kind of gravitate toward a partner a little bit more uh, robustly in that sense. So we have these attachment styles. Yeah, and yeah, people who were avoidantly attached, they were actually less happy with hearing, I love you from a partner. For women, but not for men, here we do see something. 
uh, more avoidant individuals and less anxious individuals, women, they took longer to confess their love as well. So you see kind of a graded, right? If we're saying more avoidant, less anxious, we're kind of seeing, okay, someone who is anxiously attached may confess their love first. Someone with a secure attachment, maybe a little bit later. Someone with avoidant attachments going to wait way down the line to, to say it, right? Even if they feel it before, even if they experience it earlier, they may wait longer. And anxious individuals, happier to hear it. Why is that? Individuals with anxious attachment, they need a lot of reassurance, don't they? So, of course, being told, I love you, it's reassuring to anxious people. It's, it's good, and it's good to do that. It's good to tell them, you know, I love you and, and things like that. Sometimes we look at these and we think secure attachment, good, anxious and avoidant, bad. But kind of the opinion I've come to on this is, you know, I don't think anxious is quite as bad as being avoidant. People who are anxiously attached, they seem to do pretty well in relationships with other individuals who are anxious or who are secure. They do much more poorly with individuals who are avoidant because then you get kind of that push-pull, right? You have two people that, that have very different forms of, of expression. But anxious people that need reassurance, they do well with other people who give them that reassurance. So next slide, let's go over. These are the main results, the big ones. <coughs> These are the main results, the big ones. So, given that, what can we glean from those? Why do men say, I love you first? One potential explanation for that is honest signaling of commitment, and particularly when mates are more abundant, right? More abundant, we see it uh, earlier, more frequently, in the countries with the sex ratio skewed toward women, that have more women, right? So that indicates that perhaps it is simply a honest signal of commitment. Uh, there were two hypotheses pre-registered. I'll talk about those in the next slide. More bargaining power, a potential uh, alternative explanation, but that's something you would expect if the sex ratio was in the opposite direction, right? We would expect a later confession for men. So, and that's not what we saw. We saw an earlier confession for men and a more well, I didn't, I said earlier, but we saw a more frequent first confession for men. We did not see an earlier confession. That occurred at the same for men and women. This could also indicate in some of these countries that there's an escalation of commitment when promiscuity is more common. So signaling commitment, saying I love you may serve kind of to lock a mate down, so to speak, in a relationship, right? To get past like that early dating stage when you're dating a lot of people simultaneously, as many people seem to do. Next slide, what does it say? So, we have some stereotypes, right? One of those is that women are more romantic. And I think in the past I've heard some discourse where people have said, you know, if women are not actually confessing love first, are they really more romantic? But that may not be the best interpretation, right? Because individuals who have more of a romantic ideal or who view this in a more traditional way may actually expect a man to say, I love you first as well. So there are kind of alternative interpretations in that sense. Let's go on to the next one. This is pretty important, right? Men and women, they responded similarly in happiness to a confession of romantic love, to someone saying, I love you. So it's not the case that men are happier hearing it from a woman or that a woman is happier hearing it from a man. Whoever says it first, okay, that's one thing. But the response is another. And the response seems to be the same. People like being told, I love you. Biological and parental investment theory. This indicates that the sex that is more selective, right? That is more investing, that has more risk, right? Parental investment theory, Trivers, what is that? You know, that, that women are essentially more selective because of the long gestation period, the size of the gametes, right? The egg, that sort of a thing. And this has driven more selective behavior in selecting a mate. And since most mate selection is oriented toward the long term, signaling commitment 
is very important for mate selection. So because women are more selective, they may not say I love you first. They may not put all of their eggs in the basket, so to speak. Men, on the other hand, might. So that is one interpretation and the results here consistent with that, right? Going on now to the next slide, okay? We have, in past research, this was with David Buss and, and uh, ha um, Marty Hasselton, I believe, uh, we see that women are more cautious, right? They have a higher threshold for investment, which is kind of related to parental investment, isn't it? And we see that men are more optimistic, and we know that behaviorally as well, men are less risk-averse, right? Men take more risks. Men are more risk-seeking. They're more willing to kind of put it out there. So that is another explanation for why we might see some sex differences in who confesses it first. Because confessing love first to someone is a risky behavior, isn't it? It's risky because they could reject you. They might not say it back. Yeah, and that would be pretty bleak, wouldn't it? If you said, you know, I'm in love with you, I love you, and the person's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that doesn't feel too good. So, but men are more willing to take that risk. But remember, we didn't see a sex difference in who actually fell in love first, who thought about it first, did we? So it's not necessarily the case that men fall in love first. It could simply be the case that men are more willing to confess it because men are more willing to take that risk. Let's go on. The original Ackerman paper that they're kind of trying to replicate the results of here. They found that men were even more likely to say, I love you first, if the couple had not had sex yet, okay? So that could indicate that committing, showing some signal of commitment, saying, I love you, right, is a strategy for entering a relationship, and in particular, a sexual relationship. So it could be a strategy to get sex as well, couldn't it? As opposed to just an expression of love. So that's another thing to consider. Let's go on now. Sex ratios, as mentioned. The pre-registered hypothesis, uh, they expected the opposite effect, and, and I have that in the slide, but really they pre-registered that it could go either way. So they thought in one of these hypotheses that the more men, the more you would see an earlier confession. And why is that? More competition with other men, more of a need to invest, more of a need to signal, I love you, and I wanna be in a committed relationship with you and kind of lock that person down. But the results did not come out that way, did they? Because it actually occurred more when the sex ratio was skewed toward women. So, when men had more bargaining power in that case, you would expect less commitment, but men signaled commitment more. Is it a puzzle? Maybe, maybe not, because we still have these other explanations, right? Men being more willing to take the risk, falling in love at the same uh, time period as women as well. So it didn't turn out that that was the case in these results. It could indeed just be an honest signal. And I would probably encourage you to interpret it that way in most cases that if someone says, I love you, they probably do, right? I mean, pretty straightforward there. So I mentioned attractiveness at the beginning, right? They didn't discuss that at all in the paper, although that was a part of their variables that they looked at. And I think if you see something like that, they mention it, but then they admit it, it's probably because they didn't get a significant result. What would you have expected for attractiveness? You might expect that more attractive people, again, related to bargaining power, would confess love less, or not as early, or whatever the case may be, something like that, right? Because they have more bargaining power. They have more mate options, so they're less likely to commit. But they didn't report any effect of attractiveness. So we could probably assume, but it's not certain, you know, that there was no effect of attractiveness. Typically, you know, if a researcher says, I'm gonna look at this variable, they don't report it at all. Yeah, they probably didn't find an effect. So maybe that's not the case. And you know, maybe a little bit of a white pill there as well, that individuals who are high in attractiveness are not necessarily going to drag it out or be less likely to commit or to love you, or whatever the case may be. So, short video, hope you liked it. Like, subscribe, bell, and I will make another for you very soon.